hybrid shooters. My name is Jason Vong and today I'm gonna fast track you to shooting professional looking videos with your iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. We're gonna be going over the most important settings to know, the best practices to do, and the coolest looking setup in case you wanna go overboard. And this entire guide is made possible by our friends over at Samsung. Their latest T9 external SSD will be essential to help us capture professional looking videos with the iPhone. But first, what is ProRes Log? So our goal in this video is to achieve pro looking videos. And to do that, we'll be shooting in ProRes Log. And this log profile gives us insane amount of control to how our final videos will look like. Now, pros usually dislike regular videos shot on iPhones because the footage tend to be over processed. A clear demonstration to this is how the phone selectively controls the brightness and darkness in certain areas of our footage. And while it can look good in most situations, it's when the situations that don't work that kind of makes the whole thing fall apart. For example, the skin tones might start to look plasticky. Sure does. The sharpening suddenly becomes too intense. Sure does. And the lighting constantly changes whenever there's any motion in the scenes. Oh my. And it's because of this lack of consistency that makes normal videos from iPhones look unprofessional. We cannot risk looking unprofessional. But log videos remove all of that processing and put the control back in our hands. At first, log videos look flat and dull, but there are actually a ton of data hidden underneath the pixels that we can extract from to push and pull the colors of our footage to achieve a certain style. Here's a great analogy. Think of picking up a basic pack of crayons with different colors, red, blue, green, yellow, etc. When you're shooting a regular video, the iPhone uses a limited set of crayons to represent the colors it captures. But in ProRes Log, it's now using a bigger box of crayons with a much larger spectrum of colors. Severely dumbing this down, by the way. But as you can imagine, with a larger box of crayons, you can achieve a more fine-tuned drawing. In regular video mode, the iPhone does the coloring for you. But with a log profile, you're going to have to do it yourself. So how would we do that? Well, in the editing world, we call this color grading. The color of magic. And you would be doing this in a dedicated editing app. The most popular being DaVinci Resolve, and the basic mode is free, by the way. But you can also do it in Adobe Premiere Pro and Apple Final Cut Pro 10, and pretty much anything with color wheels and sliders. Ooh, that sounds complicated. I know it sounds super complicated, but there exists a super fast method in the form of LUTs. LUTs. Just in case you heard me wrong. LUTs. Think of these as color filters that you swipe through on Instagram stories that you can slap on and bada bing bada boom, it looks amazing. Again, severely dumbing this down because LUTs are much, much more complex than just being color filters. Adding filters to your iPhone doesn't make you a photographer. But there are LUTs out there that can help you achieve certain cinematic look to the point where you almost can't tell if it's shot on an iPhone or a $5,000 dedicated cinema camera. There are free ones out there, but the paid ones are going to be much better. Just make sure they're specific to iPhone 15 Pro Apple Log. The ones that I'm using is actually a set for $60, which I got from LUT Company, and it comes with a variety of different looks. No affiliation with them, but just want to shout them out because their LUTs are amazing. You may still have to do some adjustments yourself, but for the most part, LUTs will make your life so much easier. LUTs. So how do we start shooting Log with our iPhone 15 Pro? Open up settings, scroll down to camera, open up formats, and underneath video capture, turn Apple ProRes on and set your ProRes encoding to log. And make sure at the top here that we select high efficiency since it's required if we want to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. Let's come back out and go to record video. HDR video, turn this on. This will allow us to shoot the ProRes log footage in 10-bit, which basically gives us a smoother look when we're pushing the color grade. And while we're here, default frame rate 4K 30p, and I'll go over the different frame rates later. Enhanced stabilization, on. Auto FPS, off. Lock white balance, absolutely yes. This is super important for video, especially when we shoot Apple ProRes Log. It just helps our color grade easier because the color tones remain consistent throughout. Required accessories. Now, 4K ProRes Log video files are massive. They're huge! A minute of 4K 30p ProRes Log is roughly six gigabytes, and this is going to shun a lot of people from making pro-looking videos on an iPhone. But you know what? You're no ordinary person, gosh darn it. You're watching this video because you wanna better yourself and make better looking videos. Yeah, you're willing to put up with some minor inconvenience to make your videos unique and stand out from the rest. And to that, I salute you. 
And thanks to Apple for finally giving us a USB-C port because not only does that mean universal compatibility, but also faster transfer speed. So we can connect an external SSD and record those big ProRes log files to it. And the one that I'm using is the Samsung T9 and it works with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max right out of the box. Now the advantage of recording to an external SSD is that all the footage that we capture are all organized in one location already. Since most filmmakers prefer to edit off an external hard drive anyway, mainly because it won't clog up our internal storage here, this workflow is ideal since we can just jump straight into editing without transferring anything. And the Samsung T9 has read and write speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second. So if you have a computer that has a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2X2 port, I know, super ultra specific, you can take full advantage of that transmission speed and editing will be super snappy and smooth. Now, in terms of capacity, the one terabyte Samsung T9 will approximately give us 72 minutes of 4K 60p ProRes lock recording. And I was able to fill up the drive with 28% battery remaining. On the other extreme, because of the T9's incredible power efficiency, if we use a higher capacity like a 4 terabyte variant, we can squeeze in even more recording time before we juice out our iPhones. In my test, I got close to an hour and 40 minutes before my phone shut off. Now, 4 terabyte might be a slight overboard, so I would recommend at least getting a 2 terabyte variant. And the way that I piece them together to have a comfortable filming experience is this MagSafe wall that has an elastic fabric band that holds the T9 snugly. Snug as a bug. This is my minimalistic setup, but stick around to the end to see this monstrosity of a setup later and see what it all entails. The filming process. So let's go ahead and get into the filming process. We'll be using the default camera app simply because it's more intuitive for beginners. However, I'll briefly go over an alternative app that has more professional controls that you might want to consider sometime in the future. Opening up our camera app, swiping over the video, on the top right corner, we can choose our resolution and frame rate. I recommend 30 frames per second, but most people who want to go for that cinematic look likes to shoot in 24 frames per second. But in my opinion, it actually looks pretty awful from phone cameras for whatever reason, unless you use an ND filter. Otherwise, shooting 24 frames per second without an ND filter with your iPhone, it's gonna look really choppy. Sure does. Whenever I want a clip to be in slow motion, I would shoot 60 frames per second and slow it down by 50% in the editing app. The iPhone does have a slow motion feature, but sadly, it does not work with ProRes Log. Same goes for cinematic mode, so we'll ignore that. Over on the left side, this is where we would toggle on ProRes Log. And you'll notice that we get a prompt that says it's not supported at 4K 60p. And that's because we would need to plug in an external SSD for this to work, because again, of that massive file size. Next to the ProRes Log option is the exposure compensation, and I would set this to negative 0.7. Typically for log profiles on any cameras, we would be overexposing to like 1.7 at least. But with iPhones, they tend to go a little overboard and we could lose a lot of details in our bright areas when that happens. So it's best that we keep us slightly underexposed. When in doubt, expose for the bright areas. In darker scenarios though, like nighttime footage, I would revert this back to zero zero. Otherwise the footage will look too dark and too grainy. While you're filming, you can also tap and hold to lock your exposure and focus. And this is particularly helpful when you're doing these types of review shots where you slide out from a wall and into a grand scene. This prevents the focus and exposure from jumping all over the place and giving us a more cleaner cinematic motion shot. Now, while I think the stabilization when shooting 4K videos is already pretty good, there might be times where you might want some extra stabilization. And you can do this with action mode, which is located right next to the resolution option. This is particularly helpful in really shaky scenarios, but just keep in mind the resolution would drop down to 2.7K. Lenses. Now, it's a good idea to utilize all the lenses available to you to capture a variety of different shots. For every scene that you're trying to shoot, try to get it in threes, a wide, a medium, and a close-up, which would be 0.5x for wide, 1x, 2x for medium, and 3x for close-ups if you have the iPhone 15 Pro, or the 5x if you have the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Having a variety of different angles will make your editing life so much easier. In fact, using the same principle, try to capture a beginning, a middle, and an end to your scenes. For example, I have a wide establishing shot of this band playing, and I also have close-ups of them playing their individual instruments as well as their facial expression. I even did a little orbit around them with action mode just so we can see the audience reaction. And right before they wrap up, I got this epic medium-ish shot of them ending their song. 
Having a complete sequence just helps make your editing life so much easier, and it just feels good for the viewers to watch. Sure does. Now, speaking of lenses, you may have heard this before, but it's highly recommended that you don't pinch to zoom. What we will be doing is digitally zooming into our pixels, making our videos look fuzzier. Each of these options here on the screen uses one of the dedicated cameras on the back to their fullest potential, so we're getting the best quality possible. Jason's Bonus Bits so here are some extra settings that I think will help make the process a lot easier. Going back to settings and camera option again, we will toggle on some of the preserved settings feature. This is so the camera does not reset to its default settings every time we leave and reopen the app. So camera mode on. This just means if you were on video mode before, it would just bring up video mode again when you launch the camera app. Macro control on. I highly recommend this to be on because it can get incredibly frustrating when it auto switches to macro mode whenever we get too close to something when framing our shot. But don't worry though, it will still bring up the macro option when it detects an object being close to the camera, so we can just toggle it on if we need to. Moving on, exposure adjustments on. This just keeps our negative 0.7 exposure setting on the camera app. And lastly, toggle the ProRes option here. Come back out underneath composition, turn on grids and levels. These will significantly help you frame up your shots better. Alternative app. All right, let's talk about the Blackmagic Camera app. This is a free alternative app that a lot of filmmakers are loving right now with the iPhone 15 Pro. Not only does it have a lot more manual control over the default camera app, but you can record smaller ProRes log files. Simply head to the settings tab, codec, select HEVC, Resolution 4K, and Color Space Apple Log HDR. Now, while this does allow you to record more of your ProRes log files, including 4K 60p onto your iPhone internally, I would still recommend using an external SSD like the Samsung T9, just because of the advantage of housing all the footage in one place and being able to take it to your computer and start editing right away. Let's go to work. So in settings, scrolling down to media, save clips to, files, we can choose Samsung T9 as our recording destination. By the way, you can also shoot in ProRes log and preview what your footage looks like with your favorite LUT. You can load the LUT into the hard drive, connect it to your iPhone, then go to your settings, scroll down to turn on display LUTs, and in the LUT selection, you can import it from your drive. On your shooting screen, hit the first icon here, find the LUT icon below, and turn it on. This is one major advantage of using this app over a default camera app. However, the default camera app does have its own advantage. For example, it has a much more smoother and more seamless zooming experience when you switch between the different lenses, whereas the Blackmagic camera app, it feels more jarring. Ooh, that is jarring. And if you have an Apple Watch, the default camera app can send a wireless visual transmission to your Apple Watch so you can monitor yourself and trigger recording at the same time. So a bit of a pros and cons between the two apps and the Blackmagic one can get a little overwhelming. So I would suggest to start with a default camera app first since you might already be used to the UI. And then once you're more comfortable with producing content shot on ProRes Log, you can start to transition over to the Blackmagic camera app. The coolest rig setup ever. All right, so we covered a lot about the filmmaking process, but what if we want to take it further beyond by including audio, supplying constant power to the phone, or even cooling it for long shoots? Wow, this is where a cage setup like this comes in handy. It's an impressive cage. Just by using a cage, we already will get a much better filming experience, especially by adding handos, we have better stability. And the cages that I'm using are from small rig. Just make sure to pick up the regular mobile video kit if you have the iPhone 15 Pro, or the Brandon Lee edition if you have the Pro Max. With the cage, we can now move the Samsung T9 SSD to the top, and we free up the back of the phone to attach either a MagSafe battery pack to charge our phones during downtime, or even attach a MagSafe fan to help cool the phone down faster in hotter environments. By the way, all the accessories are listed in the description box below. To power the fan, I connected the NPF battery with an adapter mount, or you can just simply use a battery bank. And lastly, audio. I'm just using the Rode Wireless Go receiver here as a placeholder, but as you can imagine, you can throw on a lav mic that has a built-in recorder on your subject if you want to get better audio. You just have to sync it up in post later. Anyways, this is just a video covering the filmmaking side of the iPhone. If you want a substantial, comprehensive guide to taking better photos with your iPhone, then you can click here on the screen to our ultimate guide to iPhone photography. 
This is a one hour virtual photo walk jam packed with priceless photography tips that you can use to maximize the capabilities of your iPhone 15 Pro. Sounds fab. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the Samsung T9 and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.